Close to the Italian city of Napoli, volcanic activity has unearthed unique mosaic floors and ancient statues dating back to the Roman Empire in today's episode on the Dive Saga channel. Today's episode is without a doubt my new favorite episode of all time. I can't wait to share it with you because it allowed me to get intimate with history in a way that I've never been able to do before. And it's a way of scuba diving that I never even thought about. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We find ourselves in Naples along the beautiful Neapolitan coast in Italy. Naples lies in the shadow of Mount Vesuvius, which is part of the Campanian Volcanic Arc, a key player in the making of today's episode. No time for pizza and city tripping today, because we are making a deep dive into history. Many of you may have heard of the lost cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum as a result of Mount Vesuvius volcanic eruptions. And as tragic and dramatic as the scale of those eruptions were, this volcanic region has always been subjected to geological activity. A little bit north of Naples, we found the town of Baia, once a lavish Las Vegas-like destination for the Roman elite, the likes of Emperor Nero, Claudio and Marcus Antonius. The original town of Baia no longer exists and I will let local dive guide Alex explain why. There is this uh, phenomenon almost unique in the world. There is here and uh, in a few parts of the world. So it's a volcanic uh, effect. Under the ground, we are in this moment in this very big caldera. Under the ground we have magma now. And the magma and this gas is continuously moving. If you imagine 2000 years ago, we have what we call the positive bradycism. So the land slowly, slowly starts to sink. Bradycism is the gradual uplift or descent of part of the Earth's surface, caused by the filling or emptying of an underground magma chamber. This area here, known as the Fledrean Fields or Campi Fledrei, are subject to this phenomenon. The entire Roman town of Baia sank beneath the waves a little under 2000 years ago and as such it remains only visible to scuba divers. It's mid-May and temperatures aren't great yet, so some of us are using dry suits. The visibility is also limited, but nevertheless it's immediately clear that the algae-covered structures on the bottom aren't ordinary rocks. The foundations of walls and columns are very recognizable. And while no actual walls are still intact, it's very easy to see the layouts of streets and buildings, like these small shops and their doorways along a Roman street. It's almost possible to imagine the people walking through these streets and sitting in front of their shops. But new life has taken over these streets now, like this Mediterranean moray eel. Then, dive guide Alex calls for our attention to show us something I can't believe I'm seeing. These mosaic floors depicting fish are originals. No replica, no restoration. These are the actual floors walked upon by Roman emperors and their following. I can't believe my eyes. The walls, the floors, it's all there. It's all real and it's 2000 years old. Dive guide Alex has something else to show. Pieces of a marble floor, 
made from marble that could only be found in Greece. Transported all the way here to ancient Baia to decorate the villas of emperors. Even if you're not a history buff, these findings are amazing. With my mind already fully blown, it's time to step it up a notch with this intricate mosaic of two fighting men, possibly gladiators. Overhead, a jellyfish swims by, presumably unaware of the inevitable passing of time like we are witnessing here. The basis of two columns suggests a doorway. Behind that doorway, another room with a mosaic floor. These patterns were commonly found on the shields of Roman soldiers. All mosaics are covered and uncovered with the volcanic rocks daily by the guides to preserve them. Although they have been here for a thousand years, the ocean is not a kind host to these treasures of the past. In a different part of the Baia Marine Archaeological Park, we find Emperor Claudius Nymphaeum, a part of his imperial vacation home designed for entertaining. We can see the floor plan here, provided by Subaya Diving Center. When it was discovered in the late 1960s, divers stumbled upon statues sticking out of the sand. Because the ocean was slowly destroying the statues, they have since been removed and placed in a museum, replaced by replicas here. The replicas are exact in every way, including their exact position and the damaged state in which they were found in the Nymphaeum. This little girl is presumably Emperor Claudia's daughter, Claudia, who died at a young age eternalized in his nymphaeum and now, 2,000 years later, still immortalized for us divers to discover. On the other side of the room, Antonia Minore, daughter of Emperor Marcus Antonius, grandmother of Caligula and great-grandmother of the infamous Emperor Nero. Several statues of the Roman Empire's high society adorn this room. It's easy to imagine how emperors would have used this space as a place to show off to their guests. In the center of the room, dive guide Alex excavates a portion of a large marble sitting bench. The armrest of the sitting bench is decorated with a face. The amount of historical details scattered across the ocean floor in this location is just breathtaking. Between the colossal amount of archaeological artifacts, an octopus appears to have made its home, because the city of Baia may be lost to the sea, but life finds a way. Finally, we take note of the cobblestones forming a Roman street that leads us away from the villa and away from this incredible dive site. 
it would be so easy and almost obvious for governments to shut down these archaeological finds to the public. So it takes courage on behalf of the Italian government to allow people access to enjoy these findings and get intimate with history in a way that's almost unimaginable.